going on everyone? This is Danger Ale. Uh, I'm going to do some sort of uh, video tutorial on mastering vocals for you uh, as a guy requested it, so uh, I have no problem doing that. And hopefully you'll sort of benefit from this, I guess, uh, and I'll show you some tips of how to get a consistent sound out of uh, a vocal track. So uh, I'm just going to play this song here. This is called Fright Hopper by Matt Emery. I'll put it in my description. And uh, I'm just it's just a little acoustic song, so uh, I'll just play the first part of the main vocals for you. Been a lover, been a friend, but I won't be back again. Oh no, been too quick to jump that train. Okay, so I'm just going to run you through the channel strip here uh, and the basic signal flow of what's going on. So basically, I guess the first thing you notice when I open this window up is the cutoff of the EQ. This is the main EQ. Um, and basically, it's taking any, anything below 120 hertz and cutting it off, essentially. And you want to do that with pretty much every vocals. Um, you know, whether it be 60 hertz or 80 hertz, you always want to cut off somewhere. Um, in this instance, I use 120 because you really don't need anything lower than that. Um, so that's the cutoff for the main equalizer. I have a gate on this as well, and if you don't know what a gate is, basically all it does is take the um, sort of the the background noise and it just eliminates it, and it, and it uh, gauges this by a threshold. And I, at this in this example, I have a minus 32 threshold, minus 32 dB, I should say, with an attack of 11 milliseconds, and uh, that gives me what the result I want. Um, but obviously, this is going to be different for your recording because you might have more background noise, or you might have you know, a, a little bit less background noise, but um, when you're recording, you generally want to have none, virtually none at all, so you don't need a gate. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's helpful in most cases, especially when it comes to drums. It's a really handy tool. So there's nothing too out of the blue about this. This is basically the, the, the default settings for the gate. So I'm going to move on to the EQ here, which is below the gate. And it's very simple. I don't have anything adjusted. Uh, you know, to to be totally correct, except for the the treble here. And really, when I master vocals, I want to hear the the uh, the tonal qualities and the air qualities of the vocals because I think that's really sort of uh, something that you really desire uh, when you master vocals. And especially in my case, I have an SM58, and it's not the exact best mic for doing vocals, especially in the studio. But uh, if you add some high end, it does have that response. So it's a good mic, I guess, and overall, but uh, when you're recording with a large diaphragm condenser, uh, it has more high end than you need, so you don't really, essentially, you don't really need to have that much trouble, but I, in this case, I do, so that's just the way it is for me. I have a compressor below the EQ, and a compressor is almost always required, uh, especially with the EQ, because you're going to be doing tonal adjustments, and you're going to be doing dynamic adjustments, and this is an example of a dynamic adjustment. I'll just go along here and show you this waveform, and you, as you can see, it gets louder, but when you hear it, it doesn't get as, as loud as it, it audibly sounds. So, uh, I'll just show you. To the start, if you can see that the gain reduction actually just uh, eliminates that problem of uh, inconsistency in the volume. And that's what this compressor does. It just eliminates inconsistency and makes it consistent. Um, that's why I use it for pretty much everything, especially the, guitar the guitars. Sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, for this example, minus 17 dB, that's going to vary, obviously. The attack is going to be uh, 17 milliseconds, but that's a creative thing. You can just sort of work your way around that. Um, but I can explain in a, a further tutorial how to use compression uh, per more precisely. I'm just running through what I have just for you guys to notice. And uh, because I EQ'd the vocals with a really high trebly sound, I wanted that in the vocals and like the tonal qualities, but I didn't want that in the sibilance. And really when you EQ treble up, you'll find that the sibilance becomes, becomes more annoying and essentially it clips. So a way to sort of reduce that is to either use a multiband compressor and find that frequency which the sibilance is, is generally around 5k or 6k and in some cases with female singers it's more than that but uh, for this example I just use a basic DS or just to not confuse you guys and all it does is is it, that exactly what it does it just DS's the sound and uh, eliminates the sibilance from clipping and just adds compression to that to that frequency so if I go to somewhere where the sibilance I'll show you 
to the start if life's too short so when the syllabus actually kicks in it reduces it and this is basically just a compressor with um, a specific frequency it targets so that's all it is the maximizer and I, I just use this for you know for different purposes but for this example it's just to maintain the loudness of the of the track so I don't have to boost the track up you know an extra 6 dB because it's not loud enough I just use the maximizer to maximize it and and this is a pretty good uh, limiter as well it's between a compressor and a limiter so I don't really need to go about adding a limiter and compressor it's just an all-in-one type, type thing and it doesn't hard clip it or anything like that it just softly uh, limits it and uh, also I have, uh, you guessed it, pitch correction. Um, this is used almost 90% of the time in music, although I heard some Katy Perry tracks, which I really appreciate, don't use it at all. And you can really tell it's when somebody uses autotune because either it's really obvious or it's they're trying not to be obvious and the tonal qualities are being sh out, uh, shifted out of phase because of the pitch correction that's being applied. Um, but I can get into more detail about that another time, I guess. Uh, basically, I just went to what the general note was. It took me about half an hour to do the, all of these corrections, and some of them didn't even need to be corrected, like this red line here. These red lines don't really need to be corrected, but uh, uh, this was a really fast take, so he didn't really want the time to do the take. He had to go. and um, But generally speaking, you want to have a good singer, you know, especially uh, in, in tonal qualities, not in just pitch. You want a good singer. But, uh, you know, it's almost masks that masked in this recording itself. And if you listen to the track, it, it almost sounds like there's no pitch correction whatsoever, and that's really the point of pitch correction. Whether you want to use it creatively, like T-Pain, or you want to use it as a sort of masking of, um, you know, the, the, the ability to hit that pitch, um, which is uh, Miley Cyrus in most cases, uh, I guess uh, that's what you want to do. So basically that's all I have for the main vocals. It applies the same for the BVs as well. Um, if I go into the mixer, I, you'll see I'll have a guitar bus and vocal bus, and that is because it allows me to level them easier, especially because I have two guitars. One is hard pan to the left, one is hard pan to the right, and essentially they're both playing the exact same thing. So I have them in a bus. With vocals, I have them all in a bus as well, especially the BVs. But if it's a big track, I'll want to put the BVs in a different, um, you know, in a different bus. But uh, it's not too, it's not too bad in this in this recording. So, in the vocal bus, I have two effects. I have stereo delay, which I use in conjunction most of the time, uh, and room works, which is a reverb uh, unit. And the reverb unit. Uh, there's really no no trick here. It's just uh, almost a thir three second uh, decay. Um, it's got 150 pre delay because I mostly use pre delay with vocals or uh, with uh, hi hats or snares or something like that. I use, almost always use a pre delay. Um, it's got a cutoff of 120 and it's got a cutoff of uh, 10k. So um, it's a really sibilant but almost lower resonant. Um, reverb and that's really what I was looking for something that adds more dynamics to the resonance of the of the vocals especially because this is a um, acoustic mix it just makes it more interesting to have a stereo delay and a room works delay or, or a reverb delay I should say um, so but there's not no trick to the stereo delay either I just have a one-fourth delay Synch synchronized to whatever tempo I'm at right now 105 and I just have it set so there's not too much um, sibilance which I take and I turn down to 7k on the high filter and I have 100 on the low filter um, basically uh, the only thing that I did here was I just changed the synchronization and I just made it from 1 4th to 575 milliseconds which is 1 4th um, but just a bit off so there's a bit more stereo to it if you know what I mean but I can get into more detail about that another time and that's basically it for my vocal mastering tutorial I hope you got something out of it and uh, you know if you have any more questions let me know